Welcome to LI on the Rise. This is all about people who are chasing their dreams. Today, I'm with a post-hardcore band from Long Island. Please introduce yourself, guys. We are Kid Judo. Uh, my name is Dan. And, and I'm James. Just to start this off, I want to give a big congratulations to you guys because I saw your first show was at Shaker's Pub, sold out. You guys are opening up for Johnny Craig. Like, <laughs> yeah. Tell everyone what that experience was like. Ooh. James? Um, well, I mean, I'm not afraid to say I was nervous. I definitely was. It, it, it was a lot of uh, firsts for me. Um, not the first time I played with Dan because we, we played in bands before. Uh, I was just on drums. So this was the first time I was singing um, first like performance gig like that. But it, it was awesome. I, I really was flattered by that turnout. A lot of uh, <clears throat> nice people. Yeah, um, it was you know, first and foremost, definitely want to thank Johnny Craig. Um, you know, we've all in the we're in the post hardcore genre. We're all, you know, fans to a varying degrees of, of dance, Gavin Dance and different bands in that in that genre. So he's obviously been around um, a long time. Um, great singer. Um, it was it was, uh, it was an honor to uh, to have our first show with this band be, you know, with him and to be opening up for him. I've never met him before. Um so I got to meet him and talk to him for a little bit. He was a really nice guy, really friendly. Uh, and he had nice things to say about us too. So um, it was my first show in like four years, almost four years. Um, so I was, I was slightly nervous to get back up on stage and play, but it was fun. Uh, we brought a lot of our friends and girlfriends and wives and stuff like that. And a lot of our, you know, I want to thank all of our friends for coming out and, and supporting too. So um, it was definitely fun. And like James said, you know, we we used to be in a band together where he, he was the drummer in that band, and uh, so we we've, we've played plenty of gigs together. But you know, big props to James. That was his first gig as a frontman singer, and he knocked it out, knocked it out of the park. Um, and I think overall, I thought we played pretty well. Um, crowd reaction seemed to like it, and you know, we got some positive feedback. Um, and overall, it was just it was just fun. So just get back into it and get the get the feet wet again, get back into yeah. feeling what it was like to gig and looking forward to doing some more. Well, congrats again on like that epic first show. Cause like, that's, you know, that, that you're opening up for somebody big and, you know, sold mm -hmm. out. And it's like, you know, it, it's, it, it's a lot to take in. Like, what, what was that? Like me and Johnny Craig it was like, damn, like I met a legit rock star, like a real <laughs> rock star. Like, was that like, yeah. Um, I, I, I kind of, I, I take some pride in the fact that I don't I don't really think I get starstruck by people, but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate who they are or like, you know, their their fame or what they've done or their reputation. So I, I just talk to them like any normal person, like I would if I meet anybody. And uh, but it was cool. It was like, oh, wow, like this guy's, you know, he's really nice. He had nice things to say about our, our set and our music. Um, and he was he was grateful that we were there and that everybody was there. So it was definitely cool. Um, and then to see all the people that came out for him too was 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 pretty cool. You know, a lot, obviously a lot of people came out strictly to see him. They it's don't very... know who we are. They don't know don't know what we sound like. Don't know what some of the other acts sound like. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a there was a following, and it was it was a cool experience all around. Very cool to see like Long Island uh, representing. You know that sort of support for him too, because I've seen Dance Gavin Dance, and I've seen him in the city. But you know, it's we don't have too many venues that uh, in my opinion on long island where it's kind of like these post hardcore bands or you know your blue swan core whatever you call that um kind of <laughs> gravitate towards so to see him pop in that that was a very surprising experience to begin with let alone play with him right but um re really like quiet polite dude you know mm -hmm. there was there was a part where the 14 year old me you know like listening to lemon meringue tie freaked out when he gave me a hug and he's like hey you guys did good and i'm like wow you mean that you know <laughs> yeah. it, it, was, it was it was very humbling and uh, uh cool so other other than meeting rock stars what was it like for you like someone to go from the drums which is a little more like kind of in the background on stage and now you're like the front guy singing like wh what's that transition like <laughs> very different uh, I mean, I was I was singing a lot in in the my like previous bands, mostly harmonies though or, or sections, right? So there was definitely a moment where when we all walked up on stage, there was like that second of disassociation, and I'm like, nah, I gotta feel all this, I gotta be present. Um, I don't know, you know, like Dan was saying, like 
it's just something we've done so often, uh, but it felt new. And, uh, you know, it's corny and it's lame, but I love these dudes. You know, I'm, I'm lucky to be in this band where there's a lot of respect and like camaraderie. So it kind of felt like a brotherly sort of like, hey, even if we kind of mess up or however we sound like we're having fun. And that just is such a different perspective uh, going in with that sort of energy. So. And it, and it was a, it was a long time coming. I mean, yeah. that was part of the reason why, you know, James speaks to the camaraderie and the, and the, and the brotherhood and stuff like that. I mean, you know, James and our other, <clears throat> our screamer, sing, um, Ian have, have really only been in this band. It's December right now. Over a little a over year, a year, a year and a half at most. Um, and why am I losing track of time? All right, and then so I'm like, because the band has been around for like six years. <laughs> no, not that not long, not that long. But yeah. I, but this February or March, I think, is four years that we started the band. You know, me, the other guitarist, um, the, the bass player, and the drummer. Um, you know, the core of us started the band almost four years ago. Um, a little uh, a little thing happened in 2020 that sort of took the the wind out of everybody's sails. A little, a little pandemic happened. Um, so shows were off the table. Um, finding singers was kind of tough. It's kind of tough to navigate auditioning singers, meeting new people throughout a pandemic too. Um, mm -hmm. So we had about a year of getting together and jamming and writing before all that happened. Um, and then that aside, you know, finding the right type of singers that could fit our music. You know, I always say, I, I joke to the guys all the time. I Sometimes I wish that like, I just wrote power chords. Sometimes I wish that I just wrote like four power chords. Like that's but my, my writing style and the other guitar players writing style is a little bit just different and just like kind of unique to that and not, you need the right type of person that can sing over it, the right type of person that knows how to write to that type of music. Um, so that process took a long time. You know, James was still drumming in, in his other band at the time. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, um, you know, step on anybody's toe. And it, it was never like that anyway. But, you know, I just, I never really considered James as a, as a serious option until, you know, he, he did step away from his other band. Some time passed. Um, and we paired him up with our screamer, uh, Ian and their their chemistry has just been instant. It's been off the charts, and they know how they have a lot of similarities, and they know how to write together. They know how to write to the music. So, the show the other night was, or two weeks ago at this point was, it was a culmination of pretty much almost four years of putting this thing together, mm -hmm. ba basically waiting for the day that we could finally get the monkey off our back and say, oh, okay, we 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 played our first show. Our other guitar player, Scott, is one of my best friends. Uh, he was one of my best men at my wedding. Um, we've been friends since almost middle school. You know, <laughs> we're 32 now. Um, when we were, we were when we were in high school, we played in bands together. When we were in our early 20s, we played in bands together. Um, you know, me and Scott have always just kind of had this like um, symbiote. Is that a word? Symbios? Symbi? Sim? Symbiotic symbiotic yeah and like chemistry and, and ability um i play guitar riff he knows how to play he knows exactly what to what to play over it he played a riff i know exactly how to harmonize it and and you know and so on so when i started this band i was really like you know what I, there's really only one person that i want to play guitar with that I, that will get me like that and that we'll be able to write good stuff and that was him so we had me and scott haven't played a gig together and we hadn't played a gig together in 10 years. <clears throat> um, our drummer, Matt, um, we had tried to start another band. We had tried to start, we had tried and failed at starting a couple of different projects, probably dating all the way back to like 2014, maybe. Um, so that so and this was our, that was our first time playing together gigging together so that was a long time coming so matt and i had never gigged together after all these years of playing together we've never played a show um so that was that was a long time coming too so it was like a great it was a milestone for sure we need, needed to get to that point of um of, of basically playing together um and I'll, I'll give you a little you know kind of background about how we formed the band um so matt our drummer like i said tried to put together some projects with him it didn't work out. 
me and James were in, uh, you know, that other band, uh, Ooh Blue, for a couple of years. He played uh, drums. I played guitar. You know, Matt and I stayed friends. Um, when I decided to move on and start my own project, it was the same thing with Scott playing guitar. There was really only one person that I could think of that I wanted to play drums. It was Matt. Um, and we kind of just sort of started it that way. Scott wasn't doing anything. And we just sort of started getting together and jamming. We had ideas built up, started writing these songs. And and then that, that process that I mentioned earlier about trying to find singers. I'm always going to be writing some sort of guitar riffs. Like I just, I just love writing guitar and playing guitar. So that's kind of what we did. Like, you know, we would, we would write these templates of the song. Even now, this like to this day, this is still how we write music. It's it, it just seems to work. You know, it kind of comes from me, it comes from Scott. You know, just come up with a couple of riffs, eventually build together, build a song. You know, put together kind of like a template or a skeleton of a song. Um, kind of, kind of create the canvas of you know, kind of build the house, so to speak. Um, and then lately, now it's now we let James and Ian sort of furnish the house and, and finish it and, and write and write what they need to it. So that process seems to work. That's kind of the only way I've ever known how to do it when it comes to playing guitar. You know, I can't sing, so I don't try to sing. Um, but that's kind of like, that's kind of just the way that it's, that it's always worked for me. It's just just playing, playing riffs, sort of write a song out of it and maybe it makes the cut and we bring it to the band. I teach it to the whole band teach it to the drum the drums bass guitar first and then and then the singers you know putz around with it and, and figure out what they can do you have a song called long island emo song and the mm -hmm. artwork for that song is a guy sitting on the toilet with a brown paper bag over his head uh mm -hmm. with a bottle in his hand yeah. can you please <clears throat> explain this artwork i don't i don't even know what you're talking about i don't even so see there's a guy on the cover <clears throat> It may or may not be me. Um, <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. I think I just, you know, Long Island emo. Emo is synonymous with being sad. So we, we were talking about <laughs> ideas, so like you know, whatever the artwork. And I think in the group text, I just threw out the idea of of drawing a sad face on a paper bag, and I was like, let me, uh, originally I was thinking, you know, let me do. I was I was like gonna get a pair of like Tim's construction boots and all that shit and like and then I was gonna originally like go sit in a gutter and like just have a whiskey bottle and have the bag over my head and just sort of mm. sit in a gutter and just kind of like be like mm. I don't know but I we ended up doing that same sort of pose just in like a uh, um in like a park Clean, bathroom well lit bathroom yeah. actually I'm gonna have, oh yeah I think I think I have it right here. So this is like an exaggerated, depressed person. Well, Long Island is really expensive, you know? So we, yeah. we kind of took some... Ah, oh, he's here! Yeah, wow. you know, I just hate my life. Uh, you know, I just... How do you uh, do it know, back, Long man? Island, it's cold all the time. It's, uh, you know, it's, we're just so, so isolated. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know that, I don't know who that was. <laughs> oh, you just missed him, dude. What was that? I thought I heard somebody. That was Baghdad. Yeah, that's the bag. Is the bag like the the mascot for the band? Like how the football I, team has the. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> if it happens, it happens. I guess. <laughs> it, it might make appearances. Uh, I saw the music video for a Long Island emo song, and I'm watching mm. it, and I'm like, I can't see anyone in this band. Everyone's a silhouette, mm. and I was like, Oh, they they got a second music video. All right, I'll just see them in that one. So I look, I look at you're gonna die, clown. And it's the yeah. same thing. I can't see anybody in the band. Was that intentional? We were able to make a, a, a lot of use out of kind of the same set that we worked in, um, that we worked on rather. And we banged out more than two videos of using all the same equipment, right? The same backdrop and everything. And I actually edited this most recent video um, shot by Internal Visions our buddy sean shout um, out sean solid guy out. right there good man yeah ah. he's the man. i love him great human being did you guys see his episode he jumped on here oh i haven't seen that yet but I i'm excited it. oh good did, did you see the ublu episode from like three years ago i think i did see that i might have been was the, i on, I the, on the other sean the lead the lead singer the other sean he got yeah. interviewed on here everything comes that's full our, circle that's our boy yeah. Yeah. Of course. yeah that's another solid sean
yeah, another yeah. Sean that I love. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Shout out him. But anyway. Yeah. Um, so pretty much we just made use of the same gear and uh, equipment that we had. And we tried to get as much content squeezed out of it as possible. Um, you know, now that everyone's kind of seen our faces from the first show and uh, promos that we've put out. Uh, it's a little less mysterious, but I know for myself, I at least wanted the silhouette effect to kind of give that mystery. And, you know, who, whoever doesn't see this, um, you know, on their on their feed, they won't know what Dan and I completely look like unless they're, like, looking at all the, the content of our real faces, right? So. Yeah. Also, I think, like, with the music video thing, like, I, I'm going to sound like an old man for a second, but I, I was, like... This was back in February, I think we did it. And I just kind of wasn't all on board with like really going all out to do a music video. I was like, it's not a focus of mine. Like, we don't have any idea. Like, nobody knows who we are yet. We don't have any music out yet. Like, that's, we don't even have any ideas to, to do like a real music video. So when I'm saying that it was about money, it was about like, all right, well, what's something we can do cheap that will get us some content? So, I mean, James, do you want, can I, should I like basically, Give out this spill the beans of how we did Time, it. Or? Times are tough, you know. You gotta get crafty. Nah, leave a little bit of a mystery. <laughs> right. We well, uh, you know, yeah. we made it. So happen. We, we did. We did basically. I'll, I'll say. I'll say is like you know, we basically did like all of this content in like you know, kind of in one place in in one night. Um, we're we're getting basically two you know two music videos out of out of one night's worth of content. Um. You know, we, we work, like we said, we work with Sean, he, he videoed it. Um, but definitely moving forward, um, you know, sometime in the early three to four months of next year, um, you know, we, we definitely are going to like film a more real music video, like with more, with like a, an actual, like heartbreak where you'll actually story. see us. Yeah. Like, an, yeah. An actual like music video. Love we'll, and we'll, more. We'll, we'll put a little, a little bit more money into it. It was money and time. You know, it was it was the main, the main thing was money and time. Yeah. Well, uh, and we, well, yeah. you you guys got five people in the band, right? Um, Is yes. it five. All right, yep. so that so that's a that's a, a good amount of people to divide <laughs> whatever the price is. So it's like if everyone you would think, but then the oh. but then the budget gets bigger because then you're like, well, now there's five of us, so we can yeah. start a little more. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I, I don't want to make it sound like we're a bunch of a broke, broke boys. Like that's it's more about like what, where our money and time better spent. So now that we have some music yeah, out, yeah. now that we're we're trying to cultivate a little bit of a following, um, there's you know a, some people like our music already. We're going to be playing some shows. Like we definitely intend to put out real music videos, and we'll 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 have them shot for real. We'll have them, you know, all the you know we'll have a storyline, and we'll 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 do them at locations and um and definitely have something legit too hopefully you know hopefully by late maybe by early spring or by, i don't know we don't You'll really see have a it next year yeah see it. i would like i would like to have i would like to have a music video out in the <laughs> first half of next year at the latest is there anything else that people need to know that like we didn't touch on like when it comes to like your supporters your followers people listening to your music is there anything you guys want to mention that we didn't i would definitely like to make sure that anyone listening and watching if you haven't listened or watched uh lies long island emo song do that now i promise and mm -hmm. then if you want to contrast go listen to you're gonna die clown so you mm -hmm. get to hear uh how different um this music mm -hmm. is because there's a lot more coming you know, so be on your tippy toes about that. I think the best thing, you know, if you want to, if the best thing to do is just follow us on Instagram. That's where we're definitely the most active. Um, mm -hmm. That's where we're going to post, you know, updates about what we're going to do, what, whatever. That's that's where you're going to find out what, what's going on with us. Um, and like James said, we are kind of, you know, we're kind of just getting started now with putting music out. Um, and, you know, these songs that we're putting out as any band will tell you you know we've been sitting on them for years already that's how it is with a lot of bands you sit on songs for years and then they come out and um yeah i mean hopefully hopefully you like what you hear from us and hopefully you, you know you want to come out and see us play somewhere live and you know we'll, we'll be out we're not going to be gigging every single weekend um you know we're a couple of us are 
married and you know i'm sure i'm sure kids are not too far away in the future um but that they'll doesn't be at the shows. yeah they'll be at the shows mm -hmm. um uh but yeah i mean i think you know follow us on instagram and see what we got we got going on we'll, we'll try to be as consistent we are going to be as consistent and steady as possible you know for as long as we are doing this to have new music out and like i said at the beginning i'm all i'm always playing guitar i'm always like i i i'm always going to have new stuff to write that i feel like writing and you know we have a good method of doing that so um yeah sounds like new content all 2023 Oof. hopefully we'll, yeah you better, you better believe it <laughs> it will definitely be new that's for sure yeah <laughs> all right guys. cool guys so um I want to I want to start to get you uh, get to know you guys on more like a personal level too. So we touched on like the music in the band, but now I want to ask you guys a couple of things. So James, worst customer experience working at Ruby Tuesdays? Wow. Uh, I'm both honored and terrified that that information is out. <laughs> um something that has not left my um traumatized brain is that I once had 12 tables and I had been serving for about seven months. It was myself and another server, but two others called out. And I was so weeded, that's the terminology uh, for servers, right? Front of house. I was so weeded that I hadn't gotten to this one table. This dude asked me for a margarita three times. On the fourth time I brought it, it was the wrong type. I think I actually brought him a mojito. And all this motherfucker says to me, are you ready? He goes, just do better. Got up and left. He got up and left. And I have, I've never forgotten that. Like, I, 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 I still see it in my, in my nightmares of me having too many tables I can't get to. I just think about that. So, nice that, little... yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, that's my answer <laughs> traumatizing such a such a small thing to say but such a big impact oh. on the human soul oh yeah Dude, for real. that would make me feel like shit it's like when, it's like when your parents just look at you because you do something yeah, wrong it's, it's like it's i'm not mad i'm disappointed that's <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> homie was mad disappointment bring him his mojito all he wanted was that margarita after a hard day at work see i would i would i would have just been mad that guy yeah. was disappointed. That's why you oh. remember it. Yeah. That's why it hurt. Shamed me. <laughs> yeah. Just everyone tuned in. Just, just don't work there. Don't. Just, just. Don't I, it's closed, there. bro. They, even they knew. They're like, yo, Jay fucked up so bad. We're shutting this down. <laughs> you set that place back. I really did. <laughs> you put them in a hole. Oh God. Um. So, so Dan, you got a, you got um a lot of tattoos. I noticed the octopus tattoo. It's, mm. that, that's that to me what what made you want to get that man oh great um <laughs> tattoo questions um some of them are most of them are just kind of different band artwork um like this these uh i guess you would call them um feathers were from the band stolas uh that was from one of their albums this wolf right here and then this eye of horus piece were from uh, an artist that i that i follow on instagram um this was from this was from a band called artifacts pareo this is this is an rx bandits tattoo this is bayside bayside got a mandala on the elbow i got a uh owl this is my morning jacket and then the octopus was more like I kind of just like definitely I needed something to fill the space here. Uh, and I had, I had thought about getting some sort of like Kraken or an octopus for a while. So I found this, I found this design. Um, you know, I, I brought it to actually, I found, I, I found this a somewhat different design and I kind of had my artist draw her own rendering of it. And she, she drew that and then, you know, tatted me up and probably I need to, I want to kind of fill the space up in here too. Um, but yeah, a lot of it's a lot of it's band art. A lot of it's just you know I don't really do quotes or any or any like you know tattoos like that. Just artwork. Try to keep the you know, try and fill up the empty space. You know. Before we wrap it up, we're gonna play a really quick game. Hmm. All right. So the game is called Free Concert. Tonight, 
there's two concerts going on and you guys get in for free you could only go to one taking back sunday my chemical romance who are we gonna see well i'll tell you right now that at the show that they just played recently there was foxing and taking back sunday i'm okay he's my girlfriend and i went to see foxing they finished their set and 10 minutes before taking back sunday went on we were like you know what i think we got our fix so i know for me i would see mcr because i did see them in september and emo me felt very revitalized um even though i've seen taken back sunday before more time like just way more times i don't even know if i've ever seen my chemical romance but i just i haven't been heavy into mcr like that <clears throat> for a while now i think taking back sunday's music to me has stood the test of time a little bit better um so i would i would probably i would probably see taking back sunday you know if, if i was you know free tickets concerts tonight and gotta go to one yeah, I would I would see Taken Back Sunday. You can't go wrong with a nice nice Adam Lazar show. Yeah, and they're a Long Island band, so it's like yeah, we got to support Long Island. Absolutely. I mean, there there's some bands that probably don't need the additional support, like like Taken Back because they're they're massive. But you know, well, MCR uh, too. MCR. Yeah, but they came back, man. They were broken up. We're all emo. Everyone was like, ah. Yeah, but wasn't my chemical romance or I uh, know it's. Blink one eighty two whose tickets were very expensive too, but wasn't no, no, no. my chemical romance weren't there Paramore. weren't there tickets super pricey when they came back? Bro, it was like a hundred twenty. Oh Par okay. Paramore's oh. like five hundred, you know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. you know, put that put that in a free like I'll slide it and I'll, I'll go to that one. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't if, if you saw Paramore this year, I don't know, who are you, Bill Gates? You're not, <laughs> yeah. You're not financially recovering. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen them. I don't think I've ever seen Paramore. Unless... War, Warp Tour 2010. Maybe Warp Tour. Maybe I saw Warp. Maybe I saw them at Warp Tour that year. I saw like a day to remember and uh, Attack Your Attack. Scene, Devil Wears Prada. That was a great Warp Tour. That was a, a, a day to remember. By the way, that was one of the most brutal mosh pits i've ever seen next to the <laughs> the used was the when i saw the used that was pretty gnarly too but a day to remember was something about it it was like grown men beat everyone's a everyone was a beefcake everyone was a big dude fucking shoulder tackles it was like they were lining up and running football practice at it in a fucking day to remember pit. and when i saw the used i think it was like the lights were flickering and i think the singer like split the crowd during a pretty handsome awkward and then they started everybody converged and the lights were flashing, and I mean, I saw it. I saw fists. I saw. I think I saw somebody bleed. I saw a couple people bleeding out of the face. Those, those uh, two shows, and I've been to like every time I die. I've been to some other shows too, but those, but those two pits from those shows stuck out to me in, in my life of shows that I've been to as two of the most brutal and like physical mosh pits that I that I've seen. And I still like to get involved in the mosh pits. Too scary. Yeah. If, if there's no blood, it just wasn't a successful pit. God. As long as it's not my blood. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> Sounded like 300 out of here. As long as it's not my blood and as long as I didn't cause it to happen. So. <laughs> All right, guys. Are we going to see Of My and Men or Bring Me the Horizon? Bring Me the Horizon. I, I, like, we, I, like, I like some of their stuff. We get more to learn from studying their trajectory, too, because they're probably one of the most like successful like branding and then genre redefining, like they're doing that whole electronic new metal thing kind of mm -hmm. now. You know? And I've heard that their shows the past few years have been really good. Like they just had like the full ensemble, all the guitars, extra instruments. Light yeah, shows have been incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, I would definitely love to see that, man. That's that yeah. an experience. What, what about you? What, who would you see out of the two? I'm curious. Oh, oh! I would see, um, I'd see Bring Me the Horizon, absolutely, because mm. I love, because you know what it is, I love the old shit and the new shit, and yeah. in Mice and Men, I'm kind of on the fence with the newer stuff, but I like the older stuff. Or they're they're like an entirely different band now because they yeah. can't re they can't recreate the same sort of sound, mm -hmm. right? Because Carlisle, the the screamer's no longer in; it's just the the Jamie dude. Mm -hmm. 
that that's another reason and it's like the music got more like simple and like generic yeah. where i don't know i just i just feel like they were so brutal at their height <sighs> and then i don't know what happened but bro that first album was like i believe it's time for me what is that second and sebring or something mm -hmm. That song, no matter who you are, if you heard that, like you're like, you're throwing down. Yeah. <laughs> I would have died in that pit that Dan's mm. describing for that oh, yeah. song. I would have mm -hmm. contributed to your deaths. Yeah, you, you would have killed me. <laughs> would have had a different singer. Well, I was just thinking about this recently, um, I guess, because I had a little bit of a Nirv like Nirvana resurgence this year. Um, and I used to love Nirvana when I was... Well, I still do, but I, they were, I loved them when I was in middle school. And I, actually I kind of, I taught myself how to play guitar by reading Nirvana tabs because there are a lot of power chords and they were, um, I think I see Kurt Cobain behind you. Um, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I learned guitar by learning Nirvana songs and learning the, reading the tabs and figuring out how to play all their stuff. And, and that kind of opened the door for me to learn other bands like Incubus and stuff like that. So I was thinking if there was, What's one band that you guys, if you had to pick one that's not around anymore, either because someone died or they broke up too early, that you really wish we could have heard more music out of that you think we were, you know, we were robbed of? You know, obviously Nirvana's one. You know, Kurt Cobain died in '94. If he never, if he was, well, I think he was killed. But if if he was never killed, <laughs> if, I do inside if, job. Yeah, if he if he was never killed, you know, I think. Nirvana could have had multiple more awesome albums. Like, like I think they would have had iconic, legendary albums just as they already have. Um, another another band like that to me would be uh, would be Alice in Chains. Um, Lane mm. Lane Staley died. I mean, mm. they they did get a lot of their best hits out already, but I, I think in the two thousands they still could have been another. And they continued making albums with a new singer, but you know, it wasn't the same as as when as not having Lane. But curious mm. what bands or artists you guys would think um the first one that comes to my mind is Jimi hendrix mm -hmm. the 27 you know? club mm -hmm. amy winehouse yep you know same amy. same with amy like if we just got a couple more bangers out of her like 100 mm percent -hmm. tragic i don't know if you guys saw the documentary it's just like one of the saddest oh, ones I've I, seen. that's why i haven't watched it yet so i've heard it's this, i've heard it's just devastating that ex-boyfriend walks back in he's like hey babe you're like no and then Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. That that's the scene in that documentary. Uh, exactly the same way. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> dude, really dude, scary. she she wins a fucking Grammy, mm -hmm. and her friend goes to her and she's like, "Amy, how do you feel?" And she's just like, "I just want to get high. This is not fun if I'm not high." Mm. It's just so sad. <laughs> so brutal. Like, yeah. It's so brutal. Yeah. Definitely but, um, robbed. Definitely robbed the talent with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's tough, you know. I mean, in general, I I definitely have the the, the philosophy. What's the saying? Um, uh, if you if you don't die a hero, you live long enough to become the villain. Right? You either die a hero or you live long enough to become a villain. Okay. Har Harvey Dent. Yeah, um, Clark Kent. Right. Uh, so, yeah. like, let's take Fallout Boy for example. And I'm just saying that's one of those bands that, like, from under the court tree, you hear that and. I'm not saying that progress and a band's sound changing is, you know, that's inevitable, right? But I do think in some instances, like bands that no, can no longer produce music or artists that can't, sometimes I think like, well, if they did do another album or two, like how would that have transpired? Would it have been kind of like shittier? <laughs> <laughs> because like you're kind of like putting them on a pedestal right when when you can no longer access them so you're like man this was timeless and and sometimes it, it truly is and, and was mm -hmm. but it's also like do you really want 20 albums of nirvana or do you want to like cherish the how many do they have like 10 less than that dude not nirvana has i think they had three if you if you include bleach yeah, close to in, 10 never mind in <laughs> utero never mind in utero bleach and incesticide and okay you know, bleach was and, the first and the, one the live mtv unplugged, yeah and then the, the mtv really unplugged good. no um, I, I agree i i would want two more two more nirvana albums i don't need five there's something there's just to me there's something about like overstaying you're welcome in, for sure in, in music you know I, i'm trying to think of a band that it might 
might do that for me. I mean, like, actually, I can think of two examples. <clears throat> when I was younger, and I have an Incubus tattoo right here, and I still love Incubus, but... And Muse, too. Incubus and Muse, they... The two bands that I was so into in growing up and into high school, but they still put out albums, they still write music, and it's just like... It's just changed so much, it doesn't do it for me anymore. I mean, that's any, anything yeah. that Incubus puts out anymore doesn't really do it for me anymore. And, you know, and I still love them. I still love their old stuff. But then you contrast that with one of my favorite bands of the past 10 years, Every Time I Die, who oh. broke up who broke up in January. Man. They had just put out a new album a year ago. And it was um, one of the best. They're around, they're like, what, early 40s? Like, they've been doing this for 23 years. Those are they, dads. Those are dads. Like, I think actual those dads. dads. Um, yeah. And then, like, they just put out an album after doing this for 23 years that was still such a fucking banger. Like, it was still so hard. Like it's it went hard. It wasn't like they softened up and they became like this mid middle aged band. Like they just still dropped like awesome music, and that hurt even more to see them break up in in January. Like oh man, you guys were absolutely at the apex of your career, absolutely at the peak of your career. But to James's point, maybe we got the best songs out of them that we were, that we were ever going to get. And they they certainly had enough albums. They had a ton of albums. So you know we didn't need more music from them, but they definitely broke they definitely broke up after putting out still a high quality album mm. and you see some bands that just continue to put out whatever and something that doesn't do it for you anymore so that that's a super interesting question though like who who did we get robbed from you know we were robbed did, of, we were robbed of amy yep yeah mm. never i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to incorporate that in the show yeah, you yeah. should <laughs> tell oh, the, yeah. to others. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, there's just so many. I mean, mm-hmm. Kurt, Lane Staley, Jimi Hendrix, um, Amy Winehouse, um, all the all those guys from the 2000s. Chris Cornell, uh, yeah. Chester ben- Chester Bennington, Taylor Hawkins from the yeah he's back there. Yeah, Taylor, on the Taylor Hawkins from the up. from Foo Fighters. Um, who am I forgetting? No, Chris Cornell. Too many, oh, man. Scott Stapp. Uh, no, not Scott Stapp. He's from Creed. Scott Weiland, Stone Temple Pilots. I would have loved to have another Bowie album. Yeah. Right. <laughs> One of those yeah. things. A lot of, uh, a lot of artists. Dimebag Daryl. Yeah. And that's why in this band, we're the healthiest we've ever been. There's no drugs. There's no drinking. Right, Dan? I'm just kidding. Right. Just making a point. <laughs> Trying to stick around so we can be uh immortalized. No, we we only uh we only we only do the I watch. We we only we only do the legal drugs. Yeah, I'm the DD. I mean our album's gonna be called an excuse to drink beer, so Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Maybe no. Blur. Nobody knows that yet. Beep, what beep is... that if you keep album. That. No, <laughs> album. I appreciate you guys making the time for this. And um yeah, Please let everyone know where they can follow you and listen to all the music. Thanks, kid man. Well, uh, yep, that's it. On on Instagram, we're Kid Judo. T, uh, two D's and Kid. Um, same thing on Spotify, Kid Judo. Um, we have the two singles out. We're tentatively having plans to release another single, uh, hopefully in January. So more reasons to follow us and keep up. You know, get some news on that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we'll have. We'll be releasing a couple, a couple more songs as steadily as we can over the next two or three months, and then, you know, there might be some sort of collection of songs that has a total name to it that uh, that comes out at some point. You know, maybe in like uh, March some, or April. Someday. You know, ah, who knows? I don't know. That's Could just be. that's just what a bird yeah. told me. Yeah, I don't know what birds you're listening to. <laughs> hey, Judo, K I D D J U D O. You'll find us. You you want to. So it's like you, you, you guys want to promote it without promoting it. I'm I'm confused. Like there's an album Mysterious. on the way. There's I'm confused. Like, yeah. I'm confused too. I'm apparently I'm being told that that we're not supposed to let any cats. Out. I just like making it, you know, a little mysterious. All right, so <laughs> maybe. Come on, Bagman. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 set some I'll set some hard concrete to it right now. We got a, we're gonna have another single coming out in, in January, um, and we'll we'll have at least one more single coming out. I like I don't know early March and then mid March we're aiming to drop this album. It's a ten song album. Uh, we're we're aiming to have this out in March. You know we've been sitting on the songs long enough. Um, 
And then, you know, we'll probably continue to release, you know, we'll probably have a music video like I was talking about earlier out sometime between March and May, you know, so we'll, we'll continue to put out our songs, promote them, but definitely full length album is going to be coming out in, um, in March. It's going to be called an excuse to drink beer. Uh, Cause that was the joke that that's what this band started as an excuse to get together on Friday nights and drink beer until we actually started to write songs together and really, really put some stuff together. Um, we have one we have one show coming up. I won't get too much into this, but it's the night for the Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you'll see more details. Well, there's a sh- there's a show flyer that we're waiting on, so you'll see more details yeah, about that. Yeah. Um, and then we'll we'll book a couple shows as you know as we see some come along. We'll book some shows for the summer, um, in the spring, and some good opportunities. And we'll try to get out there and play in front of people. And you know. Like I said, with the demos, we're already writing demos for new stuff. And you know, I'm, now that music, now that our music's coming out, it's only lighting a fire under my ass to get back into a studio at some point next year and record the next round of um, whether it's another EP or, or an album or just something. So we have no no shortage of content and stuff to put out over the next year, really. So, oh yeah, that's us. Everybody tuned in down below. Give them a follow. All the links to the music, all the links to the Instagrams right down there. James, Dan, appreciate you guys. Thank you. Christian, thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much, Christian.